Welcome, dear viewers, to an intellectual journey through the life and thought of a philosopher and theologian whose influence has echoed through the centuries. Join us as we explore the intricate world of John Donne's Scotus, the subtle doctor of the Middle Ages. In this video, we'll embark on a fascinating exploration of Scotus's views on God, knowledge, and reality. His philosophical and theological insights continue to shape the way we think about these fundamental questions. We'll delve into Scotus's contributions to the nature of God, his thoughts on knowledge and epistemology, and his complex metaphysical framework. His impact on Western philosophy and theology is both profound and enduring. So, join us as we unravel the life and ideas of John Donne's Scotus, a scholar who straddled the line between faith and reason, challenging our understanding of the world and our place in it. John Donne's Scotus was born in the small village of Duns in Berwickshire, Scotland, around the year 1266. This location would later give rise to the moniker, Scotus, referring to his Scottish origin. His early life in Scotland was marked by a period of intellectual and spiritual awakening, which would set the stage for his future as a scholar and theologian. As a young man, Scotus likely received his early education in grammar and logic at a local school. His education would have been grounded in the scholastic tradition, which was the dominant intellectual framework in medieval Europe. Scholasticism emphasized rigorous logical analysis and the reconciliation of faith and reason. At some point in his youth, Scotus made the significant decision to enter the Franciscan order. This choice had a profound impact on his life and intellectual development. The Franciscans were known for their commitment to a life of poverty and their dedication to theological and philosophical pursuits. It was within the Franciscan order that Scotus would receive the education and training that laid the foundation for his future work. Scotus's academic journey led him to Oxford, where he continued his studies and honed his intellectual skills. At Oxford, he encountered the works of other influential philosophers, such as Thomas Aquinas and Dun Scotus's predecessor. John Dun Scotus's early life, like that of many other medieval scholars, was marked by a deep commitment to theological and philosophical pursuits. This commitment would shape his intellectual development and set the stage for his significant contributions to the fields of theology and philosophy. It's worth noting that the intellectual landscape of medieval Europe was diverse and vibrant, with scholars engaging in lively debates on a wide range of topics. This rich intellectual environment played a crucial role in shaping the thought of individuals like John Duns Scotus. John Duns Scotus's early life in Scotland, his education, and his decision to join the Franciscan order all played pivotal roles in his journey to becoming one of the most influential figures in the history of medieval philosophy and theology. His upbringing and early experiences laid the groundwork for his later work, which continues to be a subject of study and fascination for philosophers and theologians to this day. Scotus's insights into the nature of God were deeply influenced by his Franciscan background and his engagement with the broader scholastic tradition. Here are some key aspects of Scotus's thinking regarding God. Univocity of Being one of Scotus's most significant contributions to the philosophy of God was his promotion of the univocity of being. He argued that when we speak of God and creatures, we use the term, being, in a univocal sense, meaning that it has the same essential meaning in both contexts. This was in contrast to the position of other medieval thinkers, like Thomas Aquinas, who argued for analogy or equivocity in our language about God. For Scotus, Univo City was essential for clear and precise theological discourse. Divine Simplicity Scotus held that God's essence is identical to his existence. This notion, known as divine simplicity, implies that God is an utterly simple and undivided being. In other words, God lacks any composition or division within his nature. This view of God's simplicity has profound implications for understanding God's attributes and his relationship to the created world. Voluntarism. Scotus also emphasized the voluntarist aspect of God's nature. He argued that God's will is the ultimate source of his actions, including creation and salvation. This voluntarist perspective led Scotus to emphasize the freedom of God's will and the idea that God's actions are not determined by external factors but by his own will and choice. Theological Controversies. Scotus engaged in several theological controversies of his time. 
One of the most notable was his defense of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary. Scotus argued that it was fitting for God to preserve Mary from original sin from the moment of her conception, and this view eventually became the official doctrine of the Catholic Church. Scotus's views on the nature of God had a profound influence on subsequent theological and philosophical thought. His emphasis on the univocity of being and divine simplicity, in particular, sparked debates and discussions that continue to shape contemporary theology and philosophy. In summary, John Dunn Scotus's perspective on the nature of God was marked by his commitment to the univocity of being, divine simplicity, and a voluntarist understanding of God's actions. These ideas, along with his contributions to theological controversies, established him as a significant figure in the development of medieval scholastic thought and continue to be subjects of study and debate in philosophy and theology. Scotus made significant contributions to epistemology, the branch of philosophy that deals with the nature, sources, and limits of knowledge. His ideas on knowledge are characterized by their subtlety and have left a lasting impact on the history of philosophy. Here are some key aspects of Scotus's views on knowledge. Intuitive and abstractive cognition. Scotus introduced the distinction between intuitive and abstractive cognition. Intuitive cognition, according to Scotus, involves direct and immediate awareness of individual things. In contrast, abstractive cognition involves the formation of abstract concepts and general knowledge. This distinction laid the groundwork for a more nuanced understanding of how we come to know the world. Universals and Haxietes Scotus engaged in the medieval debate over universals, which concerned the nature of concepts and how they relate to reality. He proposed the idea of Haxiety, which suggests that individuals are individuated not only by their common natures but also by their unique Haxietes or thisness. This view added complexity to the discussion on universals and individuation. Formal distinction. Scotus introduced the concept of formal distinction, which allows for distinctions within the divine essence, as well as distinctions within created realities. This idea has implications for our understanding of the relationship between God's attributes and his essence, as well as distinctions between created beings. Theology and epistemology. Scotus's work on knowledge was deeply intertwined with his theology. He believed that our knowledge of God is inherently limited due to the vast difference between the divine and human intellects. This notion has implications for how we approach theological discussions and the epistemic limits of human reason when dealing with matters of faith. Influence on later philosophy. Scotus's ideas on knowledge, particularly his discussion of intuitive and abstractive cognition, had a profound impact on later philosophers, including figures such as René Descartes and John Locke. His contributions to the theory of knowledge helped shape the development of modern epistemology. Scotus's nuanced approach to knowledge and his contributions to the ongoing debate on universals and individuation continue to be subjects of study and discussion in contemporary philosophy. His ideas challenge us to think deeply about how we perceive and understand the world, and they have left a lasting legacy in the history of philosophy. Scotus's metaphysical contributions are key to understanding how he conceptualized the nature of reality. Here are some central aspects of his views on reality. Individuation. One of the central themes in Scotus's metaphysical thought is the concept of individuation. He posited that individual substances, whether human beings, animals, or inanimate objects, are distinguished not only by their common natures but also by their unique, non-repeatable, and intrinsic characteristics. These unique characteristics are known as haxietes, and they distinguish one individual from another. Scotus's emphasis on haxietes and his rejection of the notion of bare particulars had a profound impact on later metaphysical discussions. Formal distinction. Scotus introduced the idea of formal distinction, which is a type of distinction that allows for the separation of concepts without separating the entities they refer to. This distinction is significant because it has implications for how we understand the relationships between different aspects of reality, including God's attributes and his essence. Hylomorphism. Like other medieval philosophers, Scotus endorsed a hylomorphic view of reality. This means that he believed that substances are composed of both form and matter. Form represents the essential nature of a thing, while matter provides the underlying substrate. 
This view was influenced by Aristotle's philosophy and played a central role in medieval metaphysics. Theology and Metaphysics Scotus's metaphysical ideas were closely intertwined with his theological views. He believed that metaphysics, or the study of being and reality, is essential for understanding theological questions. His discussions on the nature of God, the problem of universals, and the nature of reality were all deeply connected to his theological concerns. Influence on later philosophy. Scotus's ideas on individuation, formal distinction, and the nature of reality had a significant influence on later philosophers, including figures like William of Ockham and Francisco Suarez. These concepts also contributed to the development of later metaphysical discussions, especially in the context of the nature of particulars and universals. In summary, John Dunn Scotus's contributions to our understanding of reality were marked by his emphasis on individuation through Haxiades, the introduction of formal distinction, and his hylomorphic framework. His metaphysical ideas continue to be studied and debated in contemporary philosophy, and they are essential for comprehending his broader philosophical and theological contributions. Scotus was not only a significant philosopher but also a prominent theologian, and his theological views had a profound impact on the development of theology in the Middle Ages. Here are some key aspects of his theological beliefs. Theological method. Scotus employed a systematic and rational approach to theology, rooted in scholasticism. He sought to reconcile faith and reason, emphasizing that theology should be consistent with the principles of philosophy and sound logic. This approach was characteristic of scholastic thought during his time. Voluntarism. Scotus is often associated with theological voluntarism, which highlights the primacy of God's will in divine action. According to Scotus, God's will is free and unconstrained, and all of God's actions, including creation and salvation, are ultimately the result of his will. This emphasis on divine freedom and will had a significant influence on later theological discussions. The Immaculate Conception. One of Scotus's most famous theological positions was his defense of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary. He argued that it was fitting for God to preserve Mary from original sin from the moment of her conception. Scotus's defense of this doctrine contributed to its eventual acceptance as an official doctrine of the Catholic Church. Nature and Grace Scotus engaged in debates about the relationship between nature and grace, particularly the question of whether human nature was capable of attaining supernatural ends. He argued that there is no inherent contradiction between human nature and divine grace, emphasizing the compatibility of human freedom and divine influence. Sacramental Theology Scotus's theological writings also touched on issues related to the sacraments, the Eucharist, and the nature of the priesthood. He contributed to discussions on the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist and the theology of transubstantiation. Moral Theology Scotus's theological work extended to moral theology, where he discussed issues related to ethics, sin, and virtue. His contributions to moral theology were grounded in his philosophical views and his understanding of the will. Scotus's theological beliefs and writings were deeply rooted in the Catholic tradition, and he was committed to advancing the teachings of the Church. His theological contributions continue to be studied and have had a lasting impact on Catholic theology and Western Christian thought. While his philosophy and theology were intertwined, his theological work focused on applying scholastic principles and rigorous reasoning to matters of faith and doctrine, seeking to deepen the understanding of key theological concepts. In conclusion, the life and thought of John Duns Scotus, the subtle doctor of the Middle Ages, represent a rich tapestry of philosophy and theology that has left an enduring impact on the history of Western thought. Born in the small village of Duns in Scotland, Scotus's early life and education laid the foundation for his profound contributions to the realms of metaphysics, theology, and epistemology. Scotus's views on the nature of God challenged the prevailing notions of his time. His promotion of the Univo City of Being, the concept of divine simplicity, and his voluntarist approach to God's actions sparked debates and discussions that continue to shape contemporary theology and philosophy. In the realm of knowledge, Scotus introduced the distinction between intuitive and abstractive cognition, offering a more nuanced understanding of how humans come to know the world. His exploration of universals and his introduction of the concept of haxiety enriched discussions on the nature of concepts and individuation.
influencing later philosophers and contributing to the development of modern epistemology. Regarding reality, Scotus emphasized the individuation of beings through Haxiades and introduced the notion of formal distinction, challenging traditional metaphysical views. His hylomorphic framework and theological metaphysical synthesis have been influential in subsequent discussions about the nature of particulars and universals. Scotus's theological beliefs were intertwined with his philosophical thought. He championed the systematic and rational approach to theology, while also emphasizing the primacy of God's will and divine freedom. His theological voluntarism, defense of the Immaculate Conception, contributions to discussions on nature and grace, sacramental theology, and moral theology have left a lasting imprint on Catholic theology and Christian thought. John Dunn's Scotus's contributions continue to inspire scholars and thinkers today. His emphasis on meticulous reasoning and his ability to navigate complex theological and philosophical questions make him a figure of enduring importance in the history of Western philosophy and theology. The subtle doctor serves as a bridge between the medieval scholastic tradition and modern philosophical inquiries, reminding us of the timeless relevance of his insights. And there you have it, the captivating journey through the life and philosophy of John Dunn's Scotus. His subtle insights into God, knowledge, and reality have left an indelible mark on the history of Western thought. And there you have it, the captivating journey through the life and philosophy of John Dunn's Scotus. His subtle insights into God, knowledge, and reality have left an indelible mark on the history of Western thought. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration and that it has deepened your appreciation for the subtle doctor and his enduring legacy in the world of philosophy and theology. If you found this video enlightening, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more engaging explorations of history, philosophy, and much more. Thank you for joining us on this intellectual journey. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep the pursuit of knowledge alive. Farewell.